Okay, so you want us to watch this now? If that, if you please the court, yes. Sure. Can we turn out the lights, please, Dave? Thank you.
Is that the end of it, Mr. Lally? Or? So, yeah. All right, so I have a copy of the printed docket on 424. Paper number seven was the Commonwealth Notice of Discovery XL. All right, so that was before we impaneled. That was the day, I believe, of the long motion limine trial. All right, so we'll take a five minute break, okay? So we're ready to pick right up where we left off. I'll just be clear, the objection's overruled, Mr. Jackson. Thank you. Sergeant, we're going to start up again with the video. Your Honor, uh, for the record, uh, I believe we're picking up where it was paused, which was uh, 53536. Okay. Sergeant, as far as the condition of the vehicle, as you observe it in this pause still shot of the video, is that a fair and accurate portrayal of the condition as far as the snow or ice or anything you observe on that vehicle when it came into the Sally Ball garage? Yes, it is. Sergeant Mechanic, with reference to any individuals in this video, do you recognize any of those individuals? I can recognize Trooper Proctor myself. Other than that, I don't remember exactly who else was present at this m moment in time. If you could, sir, using the laser pointer before you, just direct your attention to where you observe yourself and where you observe Trooper Proctor. That's Trooper Proctor and myself. Finally, if you were present with this vehicle in the Sally Court Garage this evening of January 29, 2020, did either yourself or did you observe Trooper Proctor touch or manipulate in any way uh, the right rear passenger side area of that vehicle? No, we did not. Ms. Gilman, if you could play from here.
Dr. Buchanan, from what you're observing in this video, what you've seen or what you recall from this, what is it that you and Trooper Proctor and some of the other officers are doing? We're establishing a perimeter around the vehicle with uh, yellow tape in order to prevent or alert and advise anyone in the area to stay away from the vehicle. Sergeant Mechanic, do you wear a uh, warrant that was executed on that vehicle on February 1st of 2022? I am aware. You yourself were not present for that, is that correct? I was not present for the execution, no, sir. Trooper Proctor was, as far as you're aware, is that correct? That's correct. The next time that you were within the Canton Police Department Sally Port Garage with the vehicle was on February 2nd, is that correct? That's correct. On that day, where did the vehicle go uh, from the police Safe. From the Cannes Police Station, I escorted the vehicle to the Milton Barracks for safekeeping. Why was it taken from the Cannes Police Station on February 2nd to the Milton Police Barracks? What had occurred in the intervening part between January 29th and February 2nd? The Cannes Police Department had recused themselves from uh, interviews in the, that portion of the investigation. Now that the vehicle had been processed, we needed to free up the Cannes Sally Port so they can utilize that facility for transporting prisoners to their facility and booking. So we stored the now processed vehicle back at the Milton Barracks in a unheated garage. Sergeant, just for orientation purposes, again, this is another camera from within the same Sally Port garage, is that correct? That's correct. That's the opposite view from what we just viewed in the previous video. As far as any of the people within this video, do you recognize any of the individuals in there? I believe that's myself and then another officer. I don't know who that other officer is. Just again, using the laser pointer, direct your attention to where you see yourself. As far as the condition of the vehicle from January 29th, when you saw it on that day, to February 2nd, when you saw it on that day, as far as the exterior of the vehicle, what was I noted the taillight removed and the evidence collected. And as far as the snow and the caked on ice that you observed on that fire day, was that still present on February 2nd? No, that had melted away. Sergeant Buchanan, 
With regards to Mr. O'Keefe's house at One Meadows Avenue again, at some point did you become aware throughout the course of your investigation uh, that there were exterior cameras affixed to that residence as well? Yes, I did. Uh, those were ring cameras, is that correct? That's correct. With respect to the investigation, what steps were taken in order to secure any of that footage from the exterior of the house from the ring? Objection. No, I'll allow it. We applied for multiple search warrants. Objection. All right, I'll see you at sidebar on this. Sir, as far as this or any other investigation is concerned, how is it that members of your unit work through an investigation or work on a case? We... Objection. No, I'm going to allow that. As a case comes in, we address each case on individual basis based on the evidence that is presented through testimony and physical evidence that is recovered. That is what guides our investigations, and we then develop leads and process information collected. Sometimes information needs to be collected from third party holders of data or service providers, at which point to access that data, we apply for search warrants, which are guided. So leave it, move on from that. So you apply for search warrants, we'll move on from that. Sergeant, my question is more geared toward as far as individual personnel within within your unit. How is it is an investigation conducted as far as one trooper does everything or is it a collaborative effort or how is that? The reason I say we is because every investigation takes the entire unit typically to c put an effort in to conduct interviews, analysis, and so forth. So it, it's a team effort each and every time. No investigation is a one man show. That's why we call it a case officer, not a lead investigator, because the case officer organizes the individuals to assign different tasks and collect and organize the data that comes back from the third party providers and from the interviews that are conducted. As far as the interviews that are conducted through the course of this or any other investigation, is there ever an interview that's conducted just by one trooper or one person in any investigation that you've done with this unit? No, we conduct interviews with two people, whether it's a trooper and a local detective or two troopers assigned to our office, other state police uh, unit within the agency. As far as the case officer, who was the case officer on this particular investigation? The case officer in this investigation was Trooper Michael Proctor. Trooper Proctor works under your supervision, is that correct? That's correct. As far as a search warrant for the ring video from One Meadows Avenue, who specifically sat down, put pen to paper, and wrote the search warrant? Trooper Proctor was the affiant. As far as from that search warrant, are you aware of the materials that were provided by ring in response to that search warrant? Objection. I'm going to allow it. I am aware of it. Have you reviewed both the material as well as the videos that were provided by ring in response to that search warrant? I did. With respect to those videos, how were they ordered sequentially in the manner in which they were provided as far as date, time, things of that nature? Objection. Ask it differently, Mr. Lally. So the videos that you received from Ring that you reviewed, correct? Yes, I did. Objection. No, I'll allow that. So he's reviewed videos from Ring. Next question. What information did they contain as far as data? The data provided back from Ring provided videos. There was no date and time on the labeling of the unique identifier for each video, but it was presented in a sequential order, knowing that the last video presented from the provider was the last video within the scope of our request and the first one being the first in that timeline. In the scope of the request of the warrant, uh, what time frame are we talking? Objection. I'll allow that. The first warrant uh, we requested from January 24th at midnight through January 30th at midnight. With respect to those videos that were provided, you reviewed each of those, is that correct? That's correct. Your Honor, with the court's permission, I would ask to publish certain of those videos uh, for the time. <coughs> so are these, uh, why don't sidebar? With reference to uh, this particular video, Sergeant, what can you tell the jury as far as the timing of, of this particular video? Based on the appearance of the driveway, we know that this recording took place prior to the blizzard of January 29th. As far as anything that you observe in this video, as far as vehicles or people uh, within those vehicles, what did you observe within this video? I observed Mr. O'Keefe's car parked in the same location as he typically parked it, and then... I'll strike the as he typically parked Then. A black SUV parked perpendicularly to Mr. O'Keefe's vehicle adjacent to the entryway to the garage.
some point in the course of your viewing of, of this video or the video surrounding it, were you able to identify the operator of the vehicle in the uh, black SUV? Yes, that is the defendant operating her black and colorless Lexus bearing Massachusetts plate 3G684. Sergeant Mechanic, are you also aware from your review of the ring videos from One Meadows Ave, another video depicting the defendant leaving the house sometime shortly after 5 a.m. on January 29th? Yes, I am. Sergeant, with reference to this video in the one, where is Mr. O'Keefe's vehicle parked in relation to this video vis-a-vis -vis the other video? The vehicle is parked in the back corner of the driveway along the fence in the same location as, it, as it's parked in the previous video. At some point, do you see the defendant's vehicle back out of the garage in the same directionality that it did in the prior video? Yes, you do. As far as the operator of that vehicle, are you able to observe who that operator is within that vehicle? I, I observe vehicle being operated. I cannot identify who the individual is from that shot right there. From at any point in the shot or the video that you observed, are we able to recognize the operator? Not from that shot, no. With respect uh, to the timing of this video, what time in the morning is this video? This, the timing of this video is uh, approximately 5.07 a.m. when the defendant left the home through the garage via her vehicle. From this particular pause portion of the video, Sergeant, what significance do you observe within the still shot of this por portion of the video 153? The portion of this video in the still shot presented identifies a missing, damaged rear right taillight, exposing the white light coming from the right side of that taillight. If you could, using the laser pointer before you, draw the jury's attention to what you're talking about as far as that area of that video. In that video, uh, did you observe Defendant vehicle coming close to or coming into contact with Mr. O'Keefe's vehicle? Yes, I did. As far as Mr. O'Keefe's vehicle, at least from this video, what damage did you observe to Mr. O'Keefe's vehicle? No damage. As far as the ground area around where Mr. O'Keefe's vehicle is parked, specifically the rear of that vehicle, what red pieces or anything do you observe on the ground around Mr. O'Keefe's vehicle? Nothing was observed. <laughs> Mr. Gilman, from Exhibit 6, if I could have uh, video number 165. Sergeant, have you reviewed this video as well? Yes, I have. When time-wise, in relation to January 29th, approximately, is this video? It's approximately like 12.30 in the afternoon. As far as the vehicles in the foreground area from this particular camera shot, you know whose vehicles those are? Yes. The vehicle in the top left corner is Mr. O'Keefe's vehicle. Vehicle in the middle left is the defendant's vehicle. I do not know who the other two vehicles are. Sergeant, from the two individuals exiting from that vehicle, do you recognize who those individuals are? Yes, I do. And you are just using the laser pointer, direct the jury's attention to whom you recognize and identify who that person is. That there is the defendant. That there is Mr. Reed.
you recognize the person that just exited from that vehicle and behind the defendant's vehicle? Yes, I do. Who do you recognize that to be? As a defendant's brother. Sergeant, from your review of those videos, at various points you observed the defendant's brother cleaning off the defendant's car, correct? That's correct. At any point in time, did you observe the defendant's brother cleaning off the area of the right rear passenger side's taillight of the defendant's car? I did not. Sergeant, turning your attention to February 1st of 2022, yourself and a trooper, Connor Keith, is that someone you're familiar with? I am. He works within your unit as well? Yes, he does. At some point, did you and Trooper Keith on that day go to CF McCarthy's establishment? Yes, we did. What was the purpose of your visit to CF McCarthy's on that? The purpose of our visit was to retrieve surveillance video during the target time in question that we knew the victim and the defendant had visited that establishment. Also, any transaction receipts that we could collect from that location. Were you able to retrieve both video as well as transaction receipts from that establishment? We were. Sergeant, I'm showing you a series of uh, photographs of still shots. Do you recognize those, sir? I do. What do you recognize those to be? I recognize these to be still photographs of the ring video that we just watched. And that would be the one uh, with the defendant backing out sometime after 5 a.m. on January 29th. That's correct. Sergeant, do you recognize what's up on the screen? I do. Sergeant, what's up on the screen now? If you could direct the jury's attention with that laser pointed to the area of the rear passenger side tail light that you're describing damage in. Sergeant Mechanic, if I could take you back on February 1st to see a car. You secured video and uh, receipts from that establishment on that day? That's correct. As far as the video and receipts, uh, were you then able to subsequently review those at, at some point? Yes, I was. I'm showing you two photographs of still shots. Do you recognize those, sir? Yes, I do. What do you recognize those to be? Those are still shots of the CF McCarthy's surveillance video that we collected from that establishment from the dining room camera angle. Sergeant McKenna, do you recognize what's up on the screen? Yes, I do. If you could, using the laser pointer, draw the jury's attention to what significance you observe in this still shot from the CF McCarthy. We observe the victim, Mr. John O'Keefe, here, appears to be communicating with the defendant here. Mr. Camerano is over here as well. Mr. Sullivan is down here as well. Mr. O'Keefe is wearing the gray, light, two-tone sweatshirt that I held up earlier, as well as the jeans. And uh, similar to this, uh, similar to the previous one, excuse me, sorry, did you recognize what's depicted in The victim on the other side of the defendant, still dressed in the same outfit, and the defendant standing in front of him. As far as the bar area adjacent to the defendant, what significance do you know? The bar area is located near the draft beer taps at CF McCarthy's. So if you were to look at the bar, from the street, that is the left side of the bar orientation on the way to the restrooms. As far as the shelf of the bar immediately adjacent to the defendant's left arm, what do you observe in that? Here I observe a cylindrical vase style cocktail glass on the bar, as well as other beer bottles. With reference to the CF McCarthy's video,
Sergeant, for orientation purposes, with reference to the entrance or exit, point of ingress, egress bar, do you observe that somewhere within this video? Yes, at the top of the screen is the front door to McCarthy's. Uh, bar. As we just viewed the two gentlemen walking in, they walked in through the front door, heading to the taps area, draft beer location of the bar. If you could, just using the laser pointer directed your attention to that front door area. That you're the front door area is located right here. With respect to those two individuals that came in, do you recognize those two individuals? Yes, that is the victim, Mr. John O'Keefe, dressed in the same outfit as before, and Mr. Camerano. As far as the individuals around uh, Mr. O'Keefe and Mr. Camarano, do you observe or recognize anybody else in the bar area around them? At this Mr. O'Keefe is sitting next to Mr. Camarano. I believe Mr. Kurt Roberts is there as well, next to Mr. Camarano. From this time, we're at about 8.51 p.m. or so within the video, is that correct? That's correct. As far as the timestamp on this video, what information were you provided when you retrieved this video on February 1st in relation to that time and its accuracy to what time was? During video surveillance extraction, we verified the time and date on the system, and that is to show us how far behind in the past or in the future. Sometimes devices are time-stamped that's in the future. It hasn't happened yet in real time, but the video is stamped so. So what we do is prior to extracting video, we identify the difference in time between real time and video time. In this case, CF McCarthy's video was 12 minutes behind real time. Pause there briefly. As far as anyone else within the area, the bar, the area, come around with Roberts, who, if anyone else, do you recognize in that area at this point? Recognize the defendant walking in and interacting with the victim, Mr. John O'Keefe. From your review of this video, uh, what significance do you observe in this part of the video? This part of the video, I observed the defendant reaching over and retrieving a cylindrical tall cocktail glass from the bartender. Given the understanding that the video is about 12 minutes off as far as the timestamp, the defendant entered about 8.51 p.m. and is receiving this drink about 8.50 p.m. Is that correct? That's correct. <clears throat> Sergeant, during that about 30 seconds or so, what significance did you observe uh, the defendant to receive at that point? A cylindrical cocktail glass. So that would be the second drink, is that correct? That's correct. That's at approximately 9.15, is that correct? That's correct.
Now, Sergeant, from that about one minute portion uh, from that video, uh, what significance did you observe the defendant receive and do with any item? She received the shock glass beverage and poured it into the tall cylindrical cocktail glass. And then Mr. John O'Keefe stirred it for her. So that would now be the third drink. Is that correct? That is correct. That's about 9.20 p.m. Is that correct? That's correct. Sergeant, from this particular video, what is significance do you observe the defendant receiving during this time? She receives another shot glass beverage and then places that liquid into her tall cocktail glass and stacks the second shot glass into the first shot glass into the first tall cylindrical cocktail glass she had previously received and consumed. So this would now be the fourth drink, is that correct? That is correct. Per the video, that's about 9.33 p.m., is that correct? That is correct. During that period, Sergeant, what significance did you observe uh, the defendant to receive during that time frame? She received a tall cylindrical cocktail glass. In addition to that, what else did she receive uh, from the bartender during that time? Shot glass size beverage. What did she do with the shot glass in regard to the larger cylindrical glass? It was placed inside the tall cylindrical cocktail glass. So that would be drinks five and six, is that correct? That's correct. Per the timestamp on the, the bar video, this is now about 9.57 p.m., is that correct? Correct. Sergeant, round of shots during this portion of the video, is that correct? That's Yeah, sustained. You can ask it differently. What of significance did you observe the defendant and or the group that she was with do in this portion of the video? In this portion of the video, the two gentlemen to the right of the defendant consume a shot size beverage. As far as the uh, shot glass that the defendant received, what did you observe her to do with that? Objection. I'll allow it. Or the, strike that. Just what did you observe, not what she had. What did you observe the defendant to do during that portion? Prior to the shots being taken, a shot glass was poured into 
the cylindrical tall glass. So that would be drink number seven at that point? That would be drink number six. I'm sorry. So the previous portion was a cylindrical drink and then a shot glass that was five or six. Is that correct? I think that was the testimony, but ask it different. As far as that drink during that portion, is that drink number six or drink number seven? Objection. Yeah, in that form, I'll sustain it. At this point in time in the video, after watching what you've watched, how many drinks has the defendant consumed at this point? At this point, she's consumed or is in possession of... I'll allow it. Six drinks. This is at approximately 10.29 p.m., is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So during that portion of the video, uh, what did you observe as to the drink the defendant has and, and how full it is at that point? She has a cylindrical tall cocktail glass in her hand. Did you observe how full uh, that glass was? Drink number six is empty or near the bottom, almost empty. From this portion of the video, Sergeant, what have you observed the defendant and Mr. O'Keefe doing in reference to Sierra Picard? Once the defendant got drink number seven, the defendant and Mr. O'Keefe walk out of CF McCarthy's, the defendant holding the beverage, tall cylindrical glass in her hand. I'm showing you five-page document. Do you recognize that document, sir? Yes, I do. What do you recognize it to be? I recognize it to be a series of transaction receipts from the tabs at CF McCarthy's. Are these the uh, transaction receipts or tabs that you and Trooper Keith received from CF McCarthy's on February 1st, 2022? Yes, they are. With reference to those receipts or tabs, whom, if anyone of significance, do you do those tabs pertain to? The first one was opened under the bar tab, Karen A. Reed. Is there also a receipt from John O'Keefe? Yes, it is. The transaction through the credit card, being a MasterCard, was paid by Mr. John J. O'Keefe. With reference to the items listed within that particular receipt, what items of significance do you observe? Listed on the receipt. Under Karen A. Reed's receipt, one Tito's, $10. One Tito's, $10. One Coors Light, $5. Objection, Your Honor. Dan. You probably should approach. Okay. Brief. Sergeant Mechanic, on those receipts from CF McCarthy's under both Ms. Reed's receipt and Mr. O's receipt, there was Tito's vodka listed on the receipt, correct? Correct. Also on February 1st, what other establishments did you go to in the town of Kansas? Uh, myself and uh, Trooper Keith went up across the street to the Waterfall Bar and Grill and retrieved transaction receipts and video from there as well. As far as the video is concerned from that establishment, have you reviewed uh, that video as well? Yes, I did. With regard to the receipts uh, from that establishment, you reviewed those as well, is that correct? That's correct. Showing you four photographs of still shots. Do you recognize those, sir? Yes, I do. What do you recognize those to be? Those are still shots of surveillance video from the Waterfall Bar and Grill on the night of January 29th after midnight. And Mr. O'Keefe is depicted in the still shot. Those are both interior as well as exterior camera shots of Mr. O'Keefe. Exit from the waterfall, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, interior, him leaving at 12, 11 a.m., which the stamp 
on the surveillance video at the waterfall was accurate to real time. He is holding a beverage shorter cocktail glass in his right hand as he exits the establishment. He's seen on the exterior camera walking towards Washington Street. Sergeant, do you recognize what's up on the screen? We now the park as exhibit 464. And uh, what do you recognize that to be? That is the still shots uh, presented to me and entered into the exhibit of Mr. O'Keefe walking out of the Waterfall Bar and Grill at 12.11 a.m. on the night of the early morning hours of January 29th, holding a cocktail glass. Uh, do you recognize what's up on the screen, sir? Yes, sir. If you could, using the laser pointer before you, just uh, direct the jury's attention to where you observe it and what you observe it, holding as you <coughs> the Waterfall. Mr. O'Keefe is observed here. He's holding that shorter fatter cocktail glass as he's walking out of the establishment. Sergeant, do you recognize what's up on the screen? Yes, I do. If you could, you can lay the point and direct the jury's attention to what is significant to your observance. This is Mr. O'Keefe walking out, out of the waterfall establishment, holding the cocktail glass in his right hand as he walks towards Washington Street. Sir, I'm showing you what's been previously marked as Exhibit do you recognize what's contained in Exhibit 50? I do recognize, yes. And are those the receipts that you received from the waterfall when you went there on February 1st? Yes, they are. Thank you. Sir, with reference to the waterfall, in regard to the timestamp on that surveillance video, what were you told as far as the accuracy of, of that timestamp when you retrieved that video? That video was confirmed to be accurate in time, as in real time. No discrepancy. Uh, that portion of video depicts Mr. John O'Keefe walking in with the defendant, defendant gesturing to a group of people at the top of the screen, and Mr. O'Keefe walking over and giving a hug to an individual that's part of the group. of the video, you observed the defendant in that portion of the video? Yes, I did. What did you observe her to be doing? She retrieves a drink from the table and appears to consume it. Now, as far as the drink and the tall uh, cylindrical glass that you observed her walking out of C.F. McCarthy's with, what do you observe from the glass that she's taking a sip of from this portion of the video of the water? It's a shorter, fatter style glass compared to the cylindrical tall style that she walked out of C.F. McCarthy's with. Mr. Lally, why don't we end for the day? It's been a long day. Everybody ready to go home? Yeah, okay. All right. Sergeant, we'll tomorrow.